She said, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. She says, I don't understand. <laughs> I would I say, with Lily there Rose. we go. Thank you. No, I want to start with from Lily Rose. Why would nudity be a bad thing? What are people talking about? I don't understand. I don't even believe that mindset is real. That whole mindset seems fake to me. This outrage and pearl clutching that's going on about a nude actress who's beautiful. When did that become outrageous? When I was young, I wish I had done more of it. I did films where I'm running around half naked. I don't care. I don't understand, you know? It's film for beep sakes. Well, I will tell you, scumbag lady. For beep sakes, huh? I will tell you, scumbag lady, why this is a problem. Because then we have this article. Priyanka Chopra says director wanted to see her underwear. Called it an extremely dehumanizing moment. This is the problem. Guys, you do not get to be a revolving door of debaucherous, de uh, degradating beh behavior in which you pretend like the culture is, isn't, well, that it isn't your fault that you're ruining the culture. You don't get to act like sexuality is no big thing for the first 10 to 15 years of your career. And then as your career starts to wind down, say, oh, I was treated so badly. Because we know that's what this is what's going to happen here. Lily Rose Depp in about 15 to 20 years time will then come out and say, Oh, I was I was taken advantage of on set. I was not treated with respect. You don't have to wait 10 to 15 years. Yeah. Whenever Sam Levinson gets some kind of Me Too or cancellation moment, yeah. which he almost certainly will, she will capitalize on it and and comment on how he treated her. You don't I want to give context to the Priyanka Chopra thing yeah. though because we didn't talk about that. She said, I'm undercover, I'm seducing the guy in the movie. Obviously, that's what girls do when they're undercover. But I'm seducing the guy, and you have to take off one piece of clothing at a time. I wanted to layer up. The filmmaker w was like, no, I need to see her underwear. Otherwise, why is anybody coming to watch this movie? He didn't say it to me. He said it to the stylist in front of me. It was such a dehumanizing moment. It was a feeling of... I'm nothing else outside of how I can be used. My art is not important. What I contribute is not important. It's a never and then she, to be cycle. fair, she did quit the film because yeah. she didn't like that filmmaker. But also, I mean, if you're trying to, you know, rid Hollywood of all of these creeps, why not name the guy? It's the industry. It's when you're a at a never, point in your career where you can it's name a, the guy, name it, the guy. Do it's it. a never ending cycle of glorifying and glamorizing sexuality, which I would say is 110% fine. I'm not a moralist. I don't care. But you don't get to then come back 15 years later because we all know that's where this ends up. You say, yeah, it's, pro it's possible that Sam Levinson has some accusations come out against him. But even if no accusations come out against him, in 20 years time, Lily Rose Depp is going to write a book. And she's going to write a book about how on the set of The Idol, which got horrible reviews, uh, I I was treated like a piece of meat and I was constantly told to be naked and put a freaking egg in my vagina. Like that's, that's what they're going to say. And then not, I'm going to have to, and, an then, and then I'm going to have to take uh, the, my knife out of my pocket and remove it from me. So I don't stab myself in the hand from the insufferability <laughs> of your virtue signaling, because this is a revolving door cycle that happens endlessly with these people and they never change. And that's would be one problem. The other problem here is then, then they blanket statement and make it seem like it's our fault. It's, society's fault it's not hollywood's fault that these things are happening if you want to make it somebody's fault then take responsibility first if you actually want to glamorize sexuality and you don't think that's a big thing fine i don't give a crap but you don't get to do both you don't get to have it both ways kick rocks hate these people well i mean can we acknowledge the fact that maybe women in these situations do have a limited amount of agency. And oh boy. <laughs> and whether, whether true because or not, of that should be treated differently than men. I think that this comes from the pervasive lie that men and women are the same mm -hmm. and that they should be treated the same. But we all know that that's a lie. We all know that men and women are fundamentally different in their nature. And for that reason, they should be treated differently, right? They're treated with they, they so they should be treated with kid gloves because they're already treated. I'm not with talking kid about gloves. kid gloves. I'm talking about woman gloves. No, they're, they're already they're already treated as if they're mentally deficient by society. I don't think women like, are mentally deficient. They're I not. Just think I'm that saying they're, they're treated that way. They're allowed to act. Men. They're allowed to act this way. And then in 15 years' time, when they say, "I had no idea this was going on," yes, you did. 
People told you. Somebody told you. Uh, a lot of these people say, I had managers. Don't talk to that guy. Don't go up to Harvey Weinstein's room. That's a that's a bad idea. You're not oblivious. You're not stupid. I mean, where is the accountability for Jennifer Lawrence, who <laughs> profusely yeah. praised Harvey Weinstein when she was compelled to do so yep. back in 2013? And then when Me Too happened and all of this came to light for the public, Hollywood knew the whole time. They were running cover for him. She's not going to be... Uh, held accountable for that? Nope. She could well, actually she was the, be considered complicit in all of his victimizations that happened. She gets a pass because she was the first times. female action hero. So Every it's fine. single woman that knew about what was going on with Harvey Weinstein, that didn't speak up beforehand, that let other women go up to Harvey yeah. Weinstein, they all share in a, a little bit of the blame for all the rapes that happened after them. Let's so, have a Me Too for them. Yeah, like. There's a small amount, like a tiny little bit. I don't, I, it, is, it is Harvey Weinstein that did the raping, but every single woman that didn't speak up and... And, and, and man. Was, and yeah, and, and man. even well, yeah. still, Priyanka Chopra is running cover for this unnamed filmmaker mm -hmm. who she says was so dehumanizing and predatory towards her mm -hmm. because she's not naming him. When it's 20 years later, she said this happened in like 2003, she's at a point in her career where she is essentially anti-fragile and she can speak out but she won't because she's a coward it's the it's the culture of the industry they spend it's like it's it's almost maddening that you go to these websites and the articles are like right next to each other it's like all the problematic things that are going on in the industry and then it's the why is it so problematic that women want to do this why is this so, because because the situations are bad and the directors are bad and the and the actresses shouldn't put themselves in that position unless they're willing to be to own up to it and say look those were my choices i own my choices in my 20s not even saying something happened to her Chopper's not saying Chopper's not saying something bad happened to her, just that she felt dehumanized, right? That's fine, but you have to be an adult and take responsibility for your own actions. You're a, you're an adult. You're making choices for yourself. You don't get to go back on it later and then pretend like all of the degrading of our culture is our fault. Schrodinger's adult. Yes, exactly. Schrodinger's grown up. <laughs> that's that's an interesting way of putting it, right? Like yeah. uh, like if you don't open the. If you don't open the Hollywood dressing room, you don't know whether it's an adult or not. So gross. It's uh, it's, uh, it's it's crazy. Should dude. we get into the conversation that we were having before the show? Go for or, it. Go or for is it. that like not YouTube friendly? Oh, I don't we were know. talking about this because uh, right now there is just a raging debate about whether it's appropriate for thirty-year-old men to date twenty-two-year-old women. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> these are the biggest problems we have in society right now, uh, and we're adjudicating on it, and. Phil, how about you give your take first? <laughs> Coward. Um, so my take is if you are an 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 year old woman and the government and the state considers you an adult and you have agency, if you want to date a 30, 35 year old man, you can. People can disapprove, that's fine, but the idea that there needs to be social ramifications, which is what people are trying to imply when they start doing things like posting about it on social media and stuff like that, talking about, oh, what is this? Um, you know, why is this, blah, blah, blah. This, this is about power and et cetera. They have no way of knowing what the actual relationship is like. So they have no uh, inside information to, to decide that it's about power. Um, Older guys, especially dudes around 30, are going to probably try and go for, you know, 20, 21, 22. I imagine most dudes are trying to go for chicks that are older than 21 if they're like 30. Oh, and because it's a pain in the ass if you're like, if you want to go to like a bar yeah. and you can't get your girlfriend in or whatever. It like, or I imagine it's got to be. I haven't been to bars in fucking ages. But anyways, but like the, uh, the idea on the left or the, the idea that seems to be coming from the left, which used to be sex positive, is that young girls do not have the agency to make decisions like that on their own. Well, then they're not adults. And then there's a whole slew of things that go along with that, you know, with not being a full adult. Yeah. But if you're going to have society decide that at 18 years old, that you're an adult, then that's the way they have to be treated. Now, 18 years old is arbitrary. Some things 
18 years old might be a little young for. Some things 18 years old might be a little old for. Like if we made kids wait until eight, they were 18 to drive cars, that's probably a little old. I think probably, you know, 16, 17 is okay. Um, but the, the idea that, that because people are different, um, we have to adjust the age for each individual is completely and totally unworkable. So we have to have an arbitrary number to go by. It's 18 is what we have decided on. Mm -hmm. And again, there are some things that I think 18 is old enough. There's some things well, I like, think 18 is not. The but number itself, yes, it's arbitrary. The fact that we need to have a number is not arbitrary. Is that what you're saying, basically? The fact that we needed to choose a number yeah. is not arbitrary. Well, I mean... It, what do you mean? It, we ha we did we did yeah. have to treat p yeah. choose a number. That's that's not. Uh, but we chose that number yeah. arbitrarily. I I wanted to reference a Twitter thread that I saw recently for this conversation, because uh, it, it gets dicey. There's a lot riding on the assumption that women, especially in that like younger age range that Priyanka Chopra was. Um, they do have like full agency that uh, there's a so there's careers and industries riding on that assumption right now and we're kind of seeing how that's working out for us and I don't think anyone is satisfied with the status quo so here's what it said um, maybe they don't mean to but some people talk about women in a way that equates weaker with dumber it's that we have a natural disposition that is more exploitable Part of feminine nature is agreeableness. We aim to please. This means we suppress feelings of disgust to protect someone's ego. We'll go along with things we don't really want to do. We hate confrontation. We'd much rather feel affirmed and accepted than rejected. The need to be affirmed and, and accepted <clears throat> drives women to do what they do. Exploitation ensues. And I would say explo exploitation especially will ensue in an industry as seedy and amoral as Hollywood. There's a $20 one real quickly. Noah Sanders said, I'm 28 and divorced from a marriage at 21. It's hard to find women my age who have a good head on their shoulders and want kids, but doesn't have any yet. You would have to go for the ones you can find who fit your value system. Yeah. Yeah, I won't discredit that that's difficult at all. Yeah. Um, and... This, this thread also said, men experience affirmation in being seen as disagreeable. They feel good when they take risks or get into a fight. Women are the opposite. Being accepted by someone or by a group affirms us, and we will be agreeable to a fault to experience this. This is where so much sexual sin and shame comes in for women. This is why it's critical for men to have principles by which they operate, so there is no temptation to use a woman's agreeableness, her weakness, against her in a moment of passion. Is this why they push is the push is so heavy for like older women and younger men now? I have no idea. There's a push. push. Yeah, uh, for Hollywood, it or against Hollywood it? has pushed for it absolutely in the last decade. Well, it seems like now they're changing their tune and they're they're pushing against it. Yeah, uh, no older women, younger men. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like that's a that's a thing. Whether we're talking mm -hmm. cougars, desperate housewives, all these things, it's like uh, that's a thing Hollywood's pushed, but maybe because they see it as it's uh, a less dangerous thing to push given Which how is, their proclivities behind the scenes. It's strange because they're <laughs> so obviously... Hold on, older women are absolutely dangerous, but in a completely, completely different, way different way to way. younger women. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like, and a lot more fun. <laughs> in... I, I've pointed out that in those situations, if there's a huge age gap and both people are in that relationship because they want to use each other for different things, usually it's that the older person is getting used for their money, the younger person is getting used for, or their power, and the younger person is getting used for sex. That's wrong. But it happens so frequently in Hollywood and that's why we're seeing this like reckoning because you can't keep operating on the assumption that all of these young women who are, uh, like that thread said, agreeable to a fault, mm -hmm. have full agency. I don't think they do. Well, I don't know what you do about it because I just I hate the the having to read these articles, knowing that in ten years' time we're going to have to read the the inevitable follow up where she says, "I didn't know what I was doing and I was being taken advantage of." We got one from <sighs> because reasons. As an older man, I look for a certain maturity that doesn't drive me insane. If that is tolerable, then I find it acceptable. That makes sense to me. Um, yeah, and in no way am I saying that a relationship between a 22-year-old woman and a 30-year-old man is inherently inappropriate. It's not. I just, uh, 
for Hollywood, the problem, like I get the dating part, but for me, the Hollywood part is because they seem to always want to reflect back on society as if they didn't play a role in all of the problems they're creating. If they had these beliefs and they just held to those beliefs and whenever something like this came out, they said, look, you, you took the risk, you bit the bullet, you deal with the consequences. I would have less of a problem with that because you're staying intellectually honest and consistent with your morals. And but your, they want to beliefs. have their cake and eat it, it too. too. And I hate that. It's sort of like when celebrities start talking about gun mm. violence and how they want to show responsible gun use on television. Yeah. Because we didn't this. we didn't create the problem, but we're going to solve it. Exactly. That's what we hate. The, the worst thing, the, when it comes to talking about uh, responsible gun use and safety and stuff i just got this today there was a guy that was like talking about responsible safety and safety and stuff and i was i was talking about using firearms and and he didn't like the way in which i was characterizing him and i'm like this is the same kind of guy that's going to tell me that he wants people that have guns to be trained but then when you're trained to use a gun what do you think that looks like yeah do you think if you think that it's just like training people to not point the gun at other people, you are wrong. Yeah. When you get training, you get training on how to employ the gun. <laughs> that means training on how to get into a gunfight. Like if you think training means safety stuff, you're totally wrong. So then when you hear people talking about application use of of, of a gun, that means a gunfight. And then you say, oh, well, that's not what we want people to, so we want people to safely use guns. Yeah, you safely use the gun by shooting the bad guy. Yeah. That's what a, that's how you safely use a gun. Yeah. So people that talk about gun safety have this, this imaginary thing in their head where a gun becomes more safe the more training you get. No, the person becomes more deadly the more training you get. So that, like, I, that's something that bothers me and I just wanted to kind of get it off my chest. Anyways. Mm -hmm. They're, uh, I mean, it's also like the, if we're talking Hollywood in these industries, yes. they're, they very, like my favorite is when they never clear their line of fire. Like this is, it just shoot at things where there's clearly something behind them that's going to take, like yeah. that bullet's going to keep traveling. Obviously, you know, the Hollywood has, has, you know, some, some, some room to learn yeah. when it comes to but gun safety. They, Look at Alec Baldwin and stuff, but still, you know, there in, in a lot of it, it's like, it's like, look, there's, you have to draw the line between what's meant to be entertainment. And obviously it's not always going to be 110% accurate, but that's also depending differently. Like I make the joke where it's like, I don't care if a criminal says silencer, but I care when a cop says silencer <laughs> because a cop would know that that's not the proper term. Eh. Like, uh, yeah. you just know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, like if I see a criminal shoot without paying attention to what's going on behind him, I'm like, okay, it's a bad guy. You he, know, wouldn't, he, he wouldn't yeah. do that. But a cop should look to clear his line of fire to make sure that he's not going to cause collateral damage. They don't. Yeah, they, Did you hear about the gunfight? That This was a couple years back. There was a gunfight in uh, But they're portraying New aspirational York. cops, not... There was a gunfight yeah. in New York outside of the Empire State Building, and seven bystanders took rounds. Ugh. Seven bystanders. And it was all we've, cops. We got a super chat from the last of my kind. Half your age plus seven rule, anyone. Obviously, there are exceptions that are 18 plus, but there is a point with when anyone, anything with 18 at the end that causes someone to make the Mary bleh sound. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what is that? Bleh. Bleh. Uh, yeah. uh, training over spending mm -hmm. on, the, on the gun thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. I've heard di different schools of thought on half your age plus seven, but if you just go ahead and do it uh, in your head, you know, everyone can figure that out. Isn't um, it exactly like it's 22 and 30? It's, uh, yeah, for you, it like, uh, for like uh, anybody over the age of 21 or 22, like. like now, if, if this guy is looking for under or, yeah. or, or equal to. Or only looking then for. Then that's weird. But, yeah. it, but, it, but even, isn't it the type of thing where it's like you, you the point of it to like, they, there's people that did all that research. Oh, we've got right? another one oh. from right. Per Pill. They, they listen to you, Phil. Yep. He said, why are we talking about this like it's new? Men have always dated younger women. I'm 33 and women, a woman my age either, women my age either have kids and don't want more or they're waiting for Prince Charming. Yep. It just depends on maturity levels. There's a, there's a lot of amazing memes where it says like men over the age of 21 and it shows your two paths. It says like alone forever or stepdad. <laughs> <laughs> those, are, those are your paths should you choose to uh, choose, choose wisely, mm -hmm. whichever one that might be. Uh, in, in the dating one, you know, whatever, I don't care. I just want Hollywood to stop being a bunch of hypocritical scumbags. That's, that's what I care about. Jesus. Never happens. Like, 
I just want one of these articles to come out where a person's like, oh, maybe they should have thought of that before they, you know, when they were, when they were 20. Cause it's like, or at least one of these articles would be like, well, we looked back at their history and they were writing exactly the opposite when they were, when they were 25 and like when they were 22, I'm like, look, yes, 22 is still young, but you're still an adult and you're still expected to, if you're in charge of your own career, you're expected to make choices as an adult. We can talk all day long about uh, whether they're accountable for their actions, whether they should be, whether they have agency. But the fact is, legally, in the eyes of the law, they should be treated the same as men, whether that's mm -hmm. a utopian thinking, maybe. Well, in Hollywood, it's everyone's vices mm -hmm. dialed up to a thousand. So, like, yeah. the need for affirmation is dialed up majorly in the women in Hollywood. Yeah. And the the lust and the greed is dialed up to a thousand for all the men in Hollywood. So where do you think that leaves them? This is just a reflection of all of the vices that society is struggling with right now, but dialed up. But none of these, like none of these people look at this article and say, uh, and say the, this whole mindset, this fake outrage and pearl clutching. Well, how do you think we got to the Harvey Weinsteins of the world lady? Like, how did we get there? Like shocking. Shocking yeah. to me. It's like they want to be able to have the outrage and the moral superiority, but they don't want to have any of the convictions that lead to making it a better place, to actually doing better. No. And, and all I want is some consistency. <laughs> no. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.